this is a picture test in practical anatomy of the reproductive system. You may use the video as a revision for the topic or as a self-assessment tool. For the purpose of self-assessment, I will allow two seconds of pause for each picture before starting to comment, so that you may pause the video and spend your own time to read the question and come up with the answer. Then you can replay the video to confirm your answer by listening to the comments and explanations. Now I will deal with the histology of the reproductive system. Which of the following sections represents a postpubertal inactive mammary gland? If you look here at section C, for example, you will see that this is, has a very characteristic feature. These are the prostatic concretions, corpora emulatia, so this is a prostate gland, not a breast. Here you can see the uh, profiles of a highly convoluted tube, which contains multiple cells in the lumen. These are spermatozoa, and so this is the epididymis, and it is not the breast. B shows a sinai of glandular tissue, multiple sinai, with some ducts, as well and you can see that the tissue is divided by connective tissue septa some of them are thick like this one so it can it divides the tissue into lobes and others are thinner like this one which divided into lobules so this is a breast in fact but uh, the breast contains a lot of glandular and so it is an active breast while the other one here in A, mainly it shows connective tissue, it shows ducts, only ducts, no alveoli, and there is a lot of adipose tissue as well. So this is an inactive breast. In the active breast, the ducts will bud into alveoli and start secreting, while in the inactive uh, breast, there are no secretory alveoli, only ducts uh, surrounded or embedded in connective tissue septa and surrounded by adipose tissue. So A represents a section of a postpubertal inactive mammary gland. Identify the organ and the lining epithelium at A. Here you can see that this is a section in the cervix. You can see here that these folds, they constitute the cervical glands. Mucus secretion takes place here and at the cervical glands and the mucus goes down into the vagina so this is the cervix part of the cervix here is lined by simple columnar epithelium as you can see it here and then at one point this simple columnar epithelium will be uh, converted into a stratified squamous epithelium non-keratinized epithelium so uh, part of the cervix which lines the cervical canal where this uh, cervical glands open is lined by the same epithelium that lines the rest of the uterus while the outer part of the cervix that surrounds the uh, external os and the part of the cervix that extends into the vagina is lined by the same epithelium that lines the vagina and that is the stratified squamous non-keratinized epithelium answer true or false smooth muscle fibers form the main tissue component of the organ at B. Now the main bulk of the organ, in fact, of the, of the cervix is formed by fibrous tissue, fibroblasts, collagen fibers. There are very few muscle fibers. Unlike the rest of the uterus, the, rest, the thickness of the body and the fundus of the uterus is made by myometrium because this part of the uterus, the body and the fundus of the uterus, is the part that's going to require muscular contractions during delivery. But uh, here in the cervix, you don't need a lot of muscle fibers because the, the cervix during delivery, it dilates, it doesn't contract. So the main bulk of tissue here is connective tissue with few smooth muscle fibers. Identify the layers A and B. This is a section of the cortex of the ovary. It shows a primordial follicle here and a primary follicle. So you can see here that the, in the primordial follicle, the oocyte is surrounded by flattened or follicular cells, but in the primary follicle, 
these follicular cells become enlarged they form become cuboidal or low columnar cells and they form the granulosa cell so a is the granulosa cell and uh, between the granulosa cell and the uh, oocyte the primary oocyte the big cell here with the big nucleus and nucleolus in between there is an amorphous layer which is known as the zona pilosida it's made of glycoprotein material describe the epithelial lining of surfaces a and b this is a sagittal section of a female pelvis uh, showing the cervix protruding into the vagina and at a the lining epithelium is simple columnar epithelium similar to that of the rest of the uterus endometrium and uh, from the external os outwards is the epithelium that uh, covers the cervix is made of stratified squamous non-keratinized epithelium it is the same epithelium that lines the vagina and the thickness here of the pelvis of the cervix is made uh, mainly from uh, connective tissue fibers and fibroblasts there are only few muscle fibers name the cellular layer a and b what is the function of each this is a growing follicle uh, showing the granulosa cells and these cells uh, they produce the estrogen uh, mainly and then on the outer side the cells are the theca cells so these are the theca cells theca interna and theca externa the theca interna cells are concerned with the production of uh, progesterone and androgenic hormones that are going to be converted into estrogen by granulosa cells identify the structure a give the name of the structural divisions it lies in between so this is uh, made of connective tissue you can see the collagen fibers and in between them are the fibroblasts with the flattened cells you can see here the thickness of the collagen of the fibrous tissue is very thick if you compare it with the thin area here okay so this is an interlobar septum in a breast separating between the lobes of the breast and as you can see here that uh, this lobe of the breast here is further subdivided into lobules so this is a lobule this is another lobule and they are divided by thinner interlobular septa but a is an interlobar septum dividing between the lobes of the breast here you can see the sini of the breast and this is a lactiferous duct in here which of the layers a or b produces androgenic hormones again this is a, a follicle mature or graphene follicle tertiary follicle and you can see the granulosa cell and the theca cells it is the theca cells that produce the androgenic hormones that are going to be converted into estrogen by the granulosa cells identify the structure name two types of cells present in its epithelial lining now this structure looks like a tubular structure highly folded mucosa as you can see here and this is the uterine tube here this is a higher magnification of the mucosa you can see the epithelium is a simple columnar epithelium which is ciliated and these cilia while uh, they move uh, they will facilitate the movement of the uh, ovum from the tube into the uterus actually not all these all not all these cells are simple columnar epithelium there are some other cells which are called pec cells which produce some nutrition for the ovum uh, these cells are non ciliated and they have their uh, nucleus close to the lumen like this one and this is another one here so uh, they can be seen with only with difficulty so we have pec cells and we have simple columnar ciliated cells Name the endometrial stage. 
here you can see the endometrium and the myometrium. The endometrium has good amount of thickness, so this is not a menstrual stage. It is the proliferative stage uh, where you can see that there are glands here, but the glands are straight glands. They are not yet becoming coiled. When they become coiled, uh, the stage is called the secretory uh, stage, but this is the proliferative stage. B uh, represents the part of the endometrium that is called the stratum basale, which contains the bases of these glands, and this is the part that is not shed during uh, menstruation. It's only the uh, stratum uh, spongiosum and the stratum compactum that they will shed during menstruation, but this part uh, does not shed during menstruation, the basal part, stratum basalis. C is the myometrium, and you can see here the multiple muscle, smooth muscle fibers that are present in the wall of the uterus. So C is the myometrium. Name the homogeneous layer A. What is its function? Uh, this is a mature follicle uh, showing an oocyte uh, surrounded by an amorphous layer made of glycoprotein. It's called zona pilosida and surrounded by corona radiata cells. So A is the zona pilosida. It is used for the protection and nutrition of the ovum as it is ovulated from the ovary. B is an oocyte. Uh, at this stage, it is most likely that it is a secondary oocyte uh, that has entered the second meiotic division uh, just prior to ovulation. A primary oocyte is expected to be present in a primary follicle or as a secondary follicle like this one, but uh, in a tertiary follicle where there is a follicular space, single space, um, and just prior to ovulation, the oocyte is a secondary oocyte. The cell layer here in this um, growing follicle, the cell layer here surrounds the oocyte, and these are called the corona radiata cells. They are derived from granulosa cell that surround the uh, oocyte, and the stalk here between the oocyte and surrounding uh, corona radiata cells, this stalk, which is also made of cells derived from the granulosa cell, is called the cumulus oophorus. And the fluid here is called the follicular fluid. What is the secretion located in lumen A and the structure, we identify the structure B? This is a a lactating breast and you can see here there are multiple asini and present in a lobe this is an interlobar septum and the fluid in here is the milk of course secreted by the asini and then it will reach ducts which are lined by a simple or stratified cuboidal epithelium so this is a lactiferous duct here embedded in connective tissue as well.